Hello and welcome to round 12 of the Bosra MSA GT3 Championship brought to you from Circuit of the Americas. Newest track on our calendar, open in 2010, 20 turns, 3.427 miles long. My name is Jason Dilworth and I'm joined here by Paul Martin once again, who's going to take you through qualifying results. Thanks Jason. So on pole position we've got Craig Parks with a time of 205. 0.49 on his second flying lap, taking his tally of poles up to four and nine races. Tony Berger narrowly misses pole by less than a tenth of a second on his third flying lap, taking his tally of front row starts to five for the season. You've got yourself, Jason, takes third on the grid with a time of 2.06.24, taking his second highest start position of the season so far. And we've got a newcomer, Soren Cruz, starts his first race for the Bowser Championship with a sixth place. And this is his highest start position off uh, McLaren so far this season. Top 10 separated by 3.33 seconds and 21 of the 22 cars start on the grid setting a qualifying time. Yeah, some pretty interesting stats there. Um, really good to see someone else taking the McLaren on with Soren joining the championship late on, but um, getting some well needed practice in, I'm sure, ready for the 2017 series. I quite like this track, what about you Paul? Yeah, I quite enjoyed it once I got in the swing of things. The unfortunate, uh, you know, well, the bat only bad thing about the track is the first section where if you mess up any the first couple of apexes it kind of ruins the rest of your sector time. It is a tough section. As you can see viewers, we've got uh, Facebook, Twitter and please do subscribe to this channel but without further ado let's head to the grid and uh, see how this start goes for this 21 car grid and they're away. Craig gets a very decent start. Soren, is that the newcomer? It, not sure who that was in fifth. Got a great start but then held uh, back. That's nice. Dion. Yeah, interesting first corner. You've got that uphill section in the tight left hand, almost a hairpin. And we've got a, is that Chris? That's, or one uh, of the back markers? Ian Thorne getting turned around. Not sure who by, but uh, it was the other Acorn car. Can, can spot those a mile off. But other than that, pretty clean through this first section. And as you say, this these section of corners, although we're going back to have a look back from your car, actually. Yeah, yep, so we've got Chris and um, we have Ram Walker. Yeah, the 256 cars starting side by side. Everyone bunches right up through this first section. You're going to see what happened to Ian here. First off, someone touches Ryan. That's but, uh, uh, Jan, isn't it? Jan Malizeva. Yep. Uh, so that's unfortunate. But like I say, everyone bunches right up on the real heavy braking zone into turn one and catches the back markers out there. Do you see Soren there in the uh, blue livery McLaren? Oh, oh, that's Anna. yourself getting an that early touch in. I uh, wasn't expecting uh, Martin uh, Galanagy to be still at the apex when I, turned, when I arrived, so I did apologise. Early stuff, but that's a, it's a good bit of side-by-side -side racing afterwards to make up for it. That's yeah, great with, uh, my favourite John. With John Beresford managing to go round the corner next to someone without touching them. Well done, John. Um, on board with Simon Jackson, looking back at Chris Butterill's car. This is, where are they? They're 13th and 14th. Are they going to touch? No, but they're right next to each other down the main straight. Good close bit of racing. Is Chris going to get the run on the brakes? Looks like he's dropping back a little bit, but takes the dive. Simon wise to the fact that he was there. Looks for the cut back. I think uh, Simon just lost a bit of time there on the uh, curb. Yeah, look, look that way, didn't it? It's not got so much of a good run through the next section, but these guys are close. This is Phil Gregory right up the rear of Taylor Lane. Gets him on the brakes, does he, with the uh, Mercedes? Does manage to make the move stick, yep. Pushes Taylor yeah. a little bit wide, nice and fair. Good bit of racing. Yeah, good, good pass by Phil. This section's really tricky, very slippery. At the own getting a bit sideways on the exit of the last corner. Yeah, with Ben Hackerson unusually far back for Ben, uh, back in fifth. Do the touch. Oh, bit of. So a tiny touch, but that sort of rubbing is racing, apparently. So 
you know, head back into this nice section of corners again which as you say flows really nicely if you get the first bit right but flows extremely horribly if you don't and we're looking back from John Barefoot's car Brian yeah, Walker and Chris Butterill yeah from the motorsport auctions car looking back at those 256 cars again they're running right next to each other and almost a bit, oh it definitely was a little bit too close there I think was there a touch Hopefully not among teammates, you never want that, but there was nope. Taylor Lane going a bit backwards as well. Phil Gregory's still in front of him. Oh, and Taylor just gets a too happy on the par. I could have been under braking. It was this... Unfortunate. This was before the Audi change, wasn't it? So we can't blame overdriving probably just yet. Back on board again with uh, Simon Jackson. Yeah, curbs around that first sector are very unforgiving. I think he's taken a bit of bodywork damage. Yeah, that's good over that. Creased up the bonnet somehow. Good old eye racing. Yeah, I think Go on. with the cut off the corner, I think Simon Jackson has actually just given that place back to Ram Walker. There he goes. And he loses. He gets. Uh, Martin Glenick, he takes a place too. Nice yeah. to see a bit of uh, gentlemanly manners. Yeah, some really good racing going on at this point. Um, any touches that have happened have been very slight, so that's what we like to see. Nice and uh, roomy, this track. It's much wider than some of the other tracks we've been to so far this year, so that might have something to do with it. Oh, Ran getting a bit too deep in that exit, that opens up the door for Martin Golanicki. Yeah, that run out of that corner's really tough and Martin's got the move done way before the braking zone. Runs a little bit deep though, is that going to give Ryan a little opportunity again? No. Looking at You've John got... Beresford again, coming up right behind you and very wisely backs out of it right at the end. So He's learning, I like to see that. I've given him a bit of stick, but uh, that's, that was good. Oh, and he's got Chris Knight right on the rear end of his car. I thought that was going to uh, happen in reverse. It is. Oh. <laughs> oh. Unfortunate. Chris, I'm going to have to tell you off as well now. Give him room. Oh, there we go. Again, it wasn't a massive, massive touch, so we're continuing overall decent uh, driving standards this race. Back on with Taylor Lane and his recovery, and not so much. No. Called it too early, Paul. If it wasn't recorded, I'd have said that was commentator's curse. But he almost looks like he doesn't want to straighten it up at that point. Almost a race to forget already after five laps. But in this championship, it's a long race. Oh, there's that massive curb again. Chris just deciding to find it nice and early on in the race as well. Yeah, those curbs. Well, they're there for a purpose because. The difference in line you can take if that uh, curb wasn't there is dramatically increase your lap time. Yeah, there's so much runoff area at this circuit that they had to do something to stop people from uh, completely taking the nick with it. We've got John behind Chris, hopefully not looking for uh, a repeat in reverse. No, Chris leaves him loads of room, gets the move done. Chris obviously struggling with a bit of damage there. Obviously, I had my eye on that battle. Uh, oh, look, here's the leader. We haven't yeah. seen him since the very beginning. Craig Parks, this is lap pass. Uh, it's the seventh lap. That they're going around now at the mid this moment. It's just commandingly driving away. Two acorn cars following him. Not quite able to keep up the pace, but staying in formation. Simon Underhill, I don't think we've seen him this race yet either, so. No. He's chasing He's on the... down Ben Hackerson on the charge in fifth position at this moment, down into the main overtaking point. Of... Yeah, Ben leaves plenty of room, but almost opens the door up for uh, Neil Bomber. Yeah, Neil's going to have a good run down this long straight as well, by the looks of it. Yeah, we've cut back to later on, so I'm assuming nothing came of it. Ninth lap now, Neil Bomber still right on the back of Ben. Are they yeah, dropping Simon... back? Go on. yeah, Simon Underhill's really... Uh... Oh start to put some good racing together oh well there we go as, you, as you're saying that Neil's 
stuck it up in inside in almost Underhill-esque fashion and uh, give him payback, I think, for a couple of the touches that have happened between him and Ben the other way around earlier in the championship. Nice Here to see the McLaren. Yeah, on board with the new boy. There he is in the back of this pick section of three cars. Oh, and Ben gets it terribly wrong. Yeah, that's caught him massively by surprise, isn't it? Is this a replay of that? Yeah. Yep. I uh, just snap over steer, and as he's corrected, somewhat overcorrected, and it's re gripped and sent him first class straight into the wall. Martin Glenicky on the back of Chris Butterill. Yeah, Chris still struggling by the looks of it, although managing to keep up with John after losing that position again, but he's obviously struggling with some grip there and goes wide. Martin reacts, leaves him loads of room just in case, but ends up not being able to get that position. Stuck in the toe now, though. Draws alongside and he's just going to have to give it a go into this big old braking zone. Gets yeah, this done. is a very good corner to get an overtake done. But you have to be careful of your exit because there is the longest straight on the course. So yeah. Will be I think the main thing there is to, if anything, not overtake at that corner and get yourself a really good exit to have a, a good line into the next one. John getting his braking wrong and running wide, but no harm done. Loses the position to Martin, who is now a couple of places up from where he was a couple of laps ago. So making good progress and into the top ten. You've got myself on my own. <laughs> Sometimes the best place to be, isn't it? Yeah. Just getting the laps done. No, I'm in the pits. Scheduled stop, I assume. Car looks yeah, nice and clean. I, I only put. Uh, I usually run my uh, GT3 races with a, a 12 gallon load. So a lot sooner than everyone else. Let's see, run a bit lighter at the beginning. Is uh, Soren Cruz. Taking oh, advantage Dion. of a, a Dion, Dion Phillips slip, yeah, and up into sixth. He qualified in sixth, didn't he? So he's uh, back to where he started. On board with Jan Blaziva after that first lap issue, um, up to sixteenth. Although that's not going to help his cause, unfortunately, and no. stuck in the barrier as well. So he'll have to take the toe back to the pits. Got myself here. I think I've just. This was my outlap chasing down Simon Jackson. Yeah, it looks like it might be a few uh, few laps on fourth lap, maybe bottom right for viewers who haven't seen that. That's the stink length. So looks like it's fourth lap, and uh, Martin Galenicki's just done his stop as well. So chasing down the two of them. This is an interesting place to stick it up the inside. Lots of room between the two of you. That Synology car looking great. But going wide as it does so. I think he's went wide in a couple of places. And that's yeah. that's good, yeah. Sticking it up the inside, putting under loads of pressure and um, making the mistakes happen and that's a very legitimate way of getting a, a pass done. It's a course that's very if you're not hooked up with the laps, it's very unforgiving. That's very frustrating. But when you do get those good laps, it's also very rewarding. Yeah, it's a, it's a great track for that. I disliked it when I started. But here's Neil Bamber coming out of the pits. And I think Simon Underhill has jumped him through the pit stops. So he pitted five laps ago, Simon. And has obviously put in some great laps while waiting for Neil to come in and do his stop. So this is going to be a great battle to the end now by the looks of it. It's had yourself up ahead of uh, Tony Barrett. Yeah, I'd done a similar thing. I know uh, no one likes me talking about my races, but uh, just to explain why that's happened, I haven't overtaken him on track. It's just through fuel saving, and I didn't get enough of a jump, so here he is chasing me down and me waiting for the inevitable. Oh, and Tony just gets a bit out of shape. He manages to recover it well. Loads of oh, runoff no. area there. A wee bit of sideways action from yourself as well. Yeah, luckily he'd made that mistake because uh, I was looking out the side window. And there we go again. Done well to keep it out of the barrier. Heart in mouth moment that. I, was, I knew that I was going to lose that place probably by the end of the race. So It's quite strange that uh, last that corner, um, you know, you, most of the time you can run out on the Astro turf and be 100%, and then our times just doesn't want to give you the grip. 
yeah, got to be careful with it either way. And I probably just wasn't giving it enough respect. Uh, Simon Underhill here still in, well, currently in second position. Oh, it's different. As Chris Parks looks like he's it's run out of fuel. Craig run out of fuel. Or Craig Parks, my yeah, apologies. It's all good. I've made that mistake many times. Getting he has, a, a push. <laughs> yeah, run out of fuel, which means we haven't seen the moment that that happened. But what we and we also haven't seen the leader going across the line, uh, which I can tell you was Tony Budd. So uh, that's a great bit of sportsmanship, though. John, was it John or was it Alan? I think it must have been Alan giving uh, Craig a push over the line. But there's confirmation: Tony Bard taking the win uh, from Simon Underhill. Myself getting that third position. Uh, most position gained in the opening lap goes to Simon Jackson, which we've got to mention. 19th to 14th in one lap. Craig manages to lead 28 of the 29 racing laps, all Very but that last one. He also got the fastest lap, but that's scant consolation, I'm sure. Here's the uh, driver standings. You can see Ben Hackerson is almost running away with it. He's almost um, taking that championship already, but we've got two rounds to go. Craig and myself in second, separated by one point. Yeah, Important very good moment for uh, Ben Hackinson with uh, Craig not gaining that win. Yeah, absolutely. That's really helped him out. Um, but it's definitely worth mentioning Tony gets his first race of uh, first race win of this series as well, and Simon getting second. Um, very good end of the race for those guys. Well deserved for Tony. He's had a lot of bad luck throughout the championship. Nice to see him get a win. Yeah, absolutely well deserved. There's the team standings as well. 62 points uh, separates Acorn and Seagate, which is the closest we've got between any of the teams. Synology, though, re-overtake 56 for that fifth place. So that was round 12. Round 13 comes to you from Silverstone Grand Prix. We will be uploading that as soon as we can. So subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and thank you to all the sponsors for making this series happen. See you next time.